All right, so now that we've got the reasoning for why you need IPv6, let's talk about the solution to all of those problems, which is IPv6. Just a reminder, IPv4, I, Internet Protocol version 4, developed or deployed January 1st, 1983, 32-bit addresses. That's roughly 4 billion, the number's right there on your screen. IPv6, the solution to that basically solves the problem of a lack of IP addresses by creating so many IP addresses that you won't even believe it. Now that address looks like a whole bunch of numbers and letters. It's represented typically as hexadecimal numbers. And the reason for that, we've alluded to it before, talked about it before, hexadecimal is really good for representing binary because one hexadecimal digit represents four binary digits perfectly. It's a perfect mapping. So there are two to the 128th power addresses. That is 340 undecillion, 282 decillion, 366 nonillion, 920 octillion, 938 septillion, 463 sextillion, 463 quintillion, 374 quadrillion, 607 trillion, 431 billion, 768 million, 211,456 addresses. It is a lot of addresses. So many addresses. If you think, look at that 431 billion and, and the end of that. The very end of that number is 400 times as many addresses as we have in IPv4. This is a bazillion times, roughly, give or take. If, if we're talking scientific terms, it's a bazillion times. There are 100 IPv6 addresses for every atom on the surface of the Earth, give or take. There are, well, there's almost an IP address for every atom in every human on Earth. And this is an old number of atoms in every human, so that might be out of date. We might be there. But there's almost a an IP address for every atom in every human in the world. That's a lot of IP addresses. Another table here to give you some sense of the scale of IPv6. Halfway down that network, so, so the 2 to the 32nd power, 4 billion something, that's the entire IPv4 address space, Halfway, right, almost smack in the middle of that, 2 to the 64th power is the smallest network that's created on IPv6. The smallest network is roughly a bajillion times bigger than the entire IPv4 address space. And all the way at the bottom, almost as many IPv6 addresses as there are molecules of water in the Great Lakes. So it's pretty darn close. It's a lot. It's so many. Look at this graph. Look at the look at the equivalent quantities. There are more IPv6 addresses there than there are atoms in you, not even close. More than there are bacterial cells on earth, more than there more than the mass of the sun in grams. It's a lot of addresses. So an IPv6 v6 address has to be significantly longer than an IPv4 address. And like I said, it's represented as hexadecimal. So there's three parts. We don't really need subnet masks. We don't really need to divide this network the same way that we did IPv4. Um, you know, that might be arrogance. We think it's so many that we don't need it the same way that when we were handing out IPv4 addresses, we thought, ah, you can have 16 million addresses. It doesn't matter. But I think we're pretty confident that by the time we need to replace IPv6, humans will have tr transcended reality or something like that. I don't know. So the first part is the global prefix. And this is basically the equivalent of a class A network, I guess. So that's the global pref prefix that's given out to you. And then there's the subnet, which splits that global prefix into a bunch of subnets. And, and we'll talk about the numbers there, but there's a bunch of subnets there that can be created from that global prefix. So an organization would get a global prefix and be able to create 65,000 subnets um, from the 16 bits in that subnet number. So give them a global prefix, you can create 65,000 subnets. Now your house, will also likely get a global prefix. 
and within your home, you'll be able to create 65,000 subnets if you want to. I don't know what you do with 65,000 of them, but I can think of a couple things to do with two or three subnets. So that's pretty awesome. And these are all global prefix, meaning they are public IP addresses. The IPv6 equivalent of an IPv4 public IP address. Anybody could be able to get to that. And then the very last part, the, 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 la the very last part, the last 64 digits is the, or 64 bits is the interface ID. And that is the, the part that's unique to every device. So to shorten the representation of an IP address, of an IPv6 address, we can drop leading zeros. The same way you don't talk about 100. If I wrote the number 0100, you would call that 100. You would ignore the leading zero. You can do the same thing here. If you look back here, there's a whole bunch of zeros, blocks of four zeros. Those are useless, we get rid of them. We shorten it to just a single zero. Also, the, the second block of numbers there was 0db8. Now we can just call it db8. It's just a shorter way of representing it. The next thing we could do, and that the, this is about as short as we can make it, we can drop one block of all zeros. So all of those zeros between 1, 2, and then it's 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, those, all those zeros can be blocked, can be shortened to colon, colon. And we know the length of the IP address. We know how many blocks there need to be. So if there's any blocks missing from the eight that they're supposed to be, we know that they belong where that colon colon is. But you can only drop one block of all zeros because otherwise it gets ambiguous and you can't know how big your blocks are supposed to be. So you can drop one block of all zeros, replace it with colon colon. So we have some new IP addresses. 0.0.0.0 um, in IPv4 represents essentially all IP addresses. If you set up a connection to listen on your computer, you would probably set it to listen to 0.0.0.0, which means any IP address coming in, I'm gonna listen to that. In IPv6, that's represented with colon colon, so it's even shorter to write in IPv6 than it is in IPv4. Um, 127.0.0.1, the local host address that's used, that loopback address that you, your computer uses to talk to itself, well, that's colon colon one. So again, even shorter in IPv6. And that, those are the only addresses that are gonna be shorter than IPv6 than in IPv4. And then we have a couple blocks of addresses that are reserved for examples. We can only use those for examples. Kind of like um, with DNS, we have reserved, we, the INA has reserved www.example.com. Nobody can register example.com. It's reserved for examples. There's a few others that are just like that. Kind of like the 555 prefix on telephone numbers. If you hear in a TV show or in a movie, they probably use a 555 phone number because that way nobody actually gets that phone number. So that nobody starts getting a whole bunch of phone calls from people who watched a movie and thought it would be funny to dial the number. The same reason if you've ever heard of the song 8675309, that phone number um, the poor people who had that phone number when that song came out probably got a whole bunch of phone calls asking for Jenny. Check it out. Great song if you haven't heard it. So anyway, we have two blocks of IP addresses that are reserved for examples. 3FFFFFFF is reserved for examples. And 20010db8, that example that I showed you already, is reserved for examples. So any address that starts with those is used for an example and and nobody will ever have that IP address, which is great for putting things in textbooks and things like that, or samples or software demos or anything like that. You can put that IP address in without the worry that some poor person is going to get blasted with a whole bunch of traffic. So with IPv6, we've now got these global unicast addresses, which the global unicast address is an address that anybody can, it's a public address for everybody. And we, we've basically started out and said, we don't need all however many undecillion IPv6 addresses. We're going to keep it to only two to the 125th power. So we've cut out some of those to reserve them for future use. So if we ever find a need to start up a new network, if we ever start a colony on Mars, we might want to give those a different set of IP addresses for reasons that we'll talk about in another video. But for now, we are stuck on the 2000 slash 3, which means addresses that start with a 2 or a 3. So all addresses that start with a 2 or a 3, those are okay. 
If it starts with a four or it starts with a zero or it starts with a one, those are not currently being used on the internet. So again, that's only two to the 125th power addresses. I'm not gonna read that number for you, but you can do the math and figure out what it is. It's probably enough for a while, I think, because um, it's still way bigger than IPv4. And finally, that last line there, those, that's the number of addresses that we're reserving. So the addresses that don't start with a two or a three. Um, anything that starts with zero, one, or four, five, six, all the way up through F, those are reserved. So there's a few more addresses that are important to know about, I think, with IPv6. The first is link local. Um, it's kind of like an IPv4 private address, but even more restricted than that, because you can route an IPv4 private address within an organization, but you can't route it onto the internet. Well, a link local address is only for a local network and cannot be routed. This cannot leave the local network. So when your device connects, it's gonna give itself a link local address and it can blast out stuff on the network and say, hey, I'm here, hi, um, I can't use this to communicate on the internet, but I can use this address on my local network. Then there's unique local, which is more like that IPv4 private address. It can be routed within an organization. You can create different networks of unique local IP addresses if you want to, IPv6 inside your network. But really, global unicast is kind of going to be the way to go. This is a global address that everybody can use. It's routable on the internet, and we don't need to use NAT and PAT and, and private addresses in the way that we did in IPv4. We don't need to use those addresses to save on those public IP addresses. And that's the basics of IPv6.